Assalamu alaikum yo 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 what's happening guys my name is Sif and welcome back to another video hope you guys are doing well today we're gonna talk about last minute tips for SPM physics here we go okay for paper one it was all about understanding for me during my time I probably did about 20 to 30 sets of just paper one in order to really increase my understanding and out of all of these sets that I did one day before SPM I answered a bunch of trial papers and those were the most beneficial to me because the actual SPM questions were almost the same as the trial ones actually it was much easier than the trial sets so tip number one is is to do as many trial sets as you can for paper one i've collected a bunch of these notes for you guys as well so i want you to click the link in the description or in the comment section to open my google drive link and all you have to do is click on the notes file and then open paper one notes i found a file for both bm and english so go through everything and try to understand as much as you can after that open the trial file where you will see all my collected trial papers from a bunch of states you're welcome so do the paper one for as many states as you can but the trick is to look at the question and look at the answer straight away for me i'd open tabs on my pc so that i can see the questions and answers side by side but if you're on a phone maybe you can write down the answers on a piece of paper and look at the questions on your screen again do as fast as you can try to understand as much as you can and if you don't understand a question take a pic and send it to our telegram group straight away somebody will help you speed is the key for paper one time is gold you just have to practice practice more and more and more if you want to score in paper 1 physics. Okay, paper 2 is 100 marks, so it's a very important paper. There are three sections, A, B, C. In section A, there's nothing special, but in section B and C, you can choose which questions to answer. And this is beautiful because in both sections, the first question will be from form 4 and the second question will be from form 5. So theoretically, you can get full marks for section B and C, which is 40 out of 40, by only covering form 4 topics. All you have to do is choose and answer the form 4 questions. And if you want to answer form 4, you can focus on form 5 je and still boleh dapat full mark dan untuk bahagian essay ni asyik ada jumpa satu file untuk korang yang bagus gila buka P1, P2 notes and then buka P2 modification in this file you have sample answers for the essay section for every single topic so if you want to be safe go through everything or you can just go through the form 4 topics or just the form 5 topics completely up to you and the best part is that this file is in both BM and English so semua orang boleh guna file ni thank you so much to Alina Iman Arif for making this super helpful file you're a big Big, big legend. Okay, I have two more files for paper two, which are definitions and analysis. The definitions file is not that important, only go through that if you're really free. But the analysis file is extremely important. It's an analysis of the frequently asked questions from the trial papers done by the legend Alina Iman Arif again. So make sure to go through this analysis file because I'm sure it'll be very, very helpful. Okay, last but not least, paper 3 which is worth 40 marks. I'm gonna be using my trial question and this technique manjawab file to explain my tips. Okay, when you open your exam paper in section A, question number 1, I want you to immediately highlight the two variables. The trick to know which is the MV and which is the RV is to just keep on reading the question and you'll see here that they have given a lot of different temperatures. 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees and 60 degrees. Therefore, we can conclude that the temperature is the manipulated variable. Also known as pemboleh ubah di manipulasikan. Lagi satu cara untuk betul-betul confirm yang mana MV dan yang mana RV ialah masa korang pergi dekat soalan yang seterusnya yang masa diorang suruh kita isi value-value menggunakan diagram yang diorang bagi value yang kita catat tu 100% responding variable iaitu pemboleh ubah bergerak balas so again value yang diorang bagi ni adalah pemboleh ubah dimanipulasikan dan value yang kita catat adalah pemboleh ubah bergerak balas so kalau korang tengok sini Asif pun masa trial dah terbalik tulis it is what it is. Untuk constant variable pun Asif dapat salah juga. Asif tulis mass of air. Reason Asif tulis mass of air sebab dekat soalan ni dia dah tulis for a fixed mass of air. But cikgu Asif cakap tu tak boleh kira sebab apparently the mass of air tak ada effect dekat eksperimen ni. Tak kisah mass of air ni berapa pun, eksperimen dia tak ada effect. Cikgu Asif kata lah. Dan jawapan yang betul untuk soalan jenis ni ialah diameter of capillary cube. So diameter of capillary cube betul sebab kalau diameter lagi besar, the length akan lagi pendek. Contoh kalau diameter dia kecil macam ni je udara yang terperangkap tu ada chance untuk sampai sini pun boleh full tapi kalau diameter dia besar macam ni udara dia mungkin akan terperangkap sampai sini je so length dia affected so fix variable yang korang bagi ni kena pastikan yang dia ada effect dekat eksperimen make sure korang ingat tu 
And then catat value-value ni benda paling senang lah. Dia orang literally dah tunjuk dah cara dia. Cara korang untuk catat value-value dia. So kalau korang nak lagi senang, guna pembaris lepas tu draw line dekat semua ni untuk pastikan yang jawapan korang betul. Lepas tu masa tulis data ni ingat kalau meter rule kena tulis one decimal point. Contoh 2.1, 10.0 macam tu. Even zero pun kena tulis juga. Dan kalau vernier caliper dia two decimal point, 2.12, 3.10. Yang zero ni penting, ramai akan lupa. Walaupun zero kena tulis juga. Contoh kalau korang dapat tiga je kena tulis 3.00 juga decimal point is very very important and then kita tengok tabulate data again tabulate data benda paling senang korang just kena ambil semua info ni letak dalam satu kotak and then settle just yang ramai selalu salah adalah lupa letak unit unit sangat-sangat important jangan lupa tu lepas tu value-value korang dalam kotak ni kena consistent kalau value pertama korang tulis 4.5 yang kedua korang tak boleh tulis 5.80 The decimal place dia kena konsisten Untuk temperature data pertama 0 degrees Yang pertama tak boleh tulis 20.00 degrees Kena ikut Kalau yang pertama sini tak ada decimal point Semua ikut tak ada decimal point Untuk length ni sebab yang pertama ni ada satu decimal point Semua ikut satu decimal point Next adalah soalan graph Untuk graph ni ingat untuk lukis axis korang dekat luar petak graph Jangan tulis nombor-nombor dia kat dalam Kena ada kat luar And then dia punya scale tu korang kena make sure dia even Contoh skill yang even adalah satu kotak 2 unit, satu kotak 5 unit atau satu kotak 10 unit. Jangan guna satu kotak 3 unit lah, satu kotak 7 unit ke 9 unit ke yang tu semua tak boleh. So contoh yang ni Asif guna untuk X axis satu petak 10 unit dan untuk Y axis satu petak satu unit. So make sure korang punya axis tu semua even. And then korang punya heading untuk Y axis dengan X axis kena ada unit. Jangan lupa tu juga. Contoh length Asif tulis cm dan untuk temperature Asif tulis degree Celsius. Dan always always start dari zero and increase uniformly so untuk x axis asif tulis 0 to 10 to 20 to 30 to y axis 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 ada orang suka try guna simbol ni semua dekat fizik simbol-simbol pelik ni semua jangan guna untuk fizik memang salah the scale dia memang kena cantik dan kena as big as possible paling minimum 2 per 3 graph paper so yang ni dah cantik lah memang dah besar lah and after plotting all your points when you want to draw your best fit line remember to follow this rule the difference between the points above the line and below the line must be one or less for example, if this is the line, if you have one point above it and one point below, this is correct. If you have two points above and one point below, this is also correct. But let's say you have two points above and no points below, this is wrong. And lastly, let's say you have two points below and one point above, this is still correct because the difference is one and if you're still confused if above two and below two this is also considered correct because the difference between the top and bottom is zero but as usual your graph needs to pass through as many points as possible so in my best fit line here as you can see there's two points above and one point at the bottom so the difference between the up and down is one so this is a really good graph and it's correct just one last thing maybe if you're confused about which should be the y-axis and which should be on the x-axis there's a small tip that you can follow as you can see above here the title is already given graph of L against O so basically the way you see it is graph of Y against X again graph Y melawan X so in this case Y adalah L and O adalah X graph of Y against X graph of L against theta simple and then the next question will always be based on your graph state the relationship between length and theta I wrote L linearly increase as theta increase but my teacher said you shouldn't write increase here it should just be L linearly increase as theta and what you need to know is there's only four types of relationships in SPM physics Y is directly proportional to X when the best fit line goes through your origin masa korang punya graph potong kosong tu that means y is directly proportional to x. If y and x do do increase but there's a y intercept, then korang kena tulis y linearly increases as x. Kalau y turun as x increase and there is a y intercept, korang kena tulis y linearly decreases as x increases. And lastly, kalau korang jumpa shape pelik macam ni, it's always y is inversely proportional to x. If you guys ever had to draw a graph where y is against 1 over x and it's a straight line directly proportional, since this is 1 over x, the relationship will be y is inversely proportional to x. Just try to memorize this because this is an easy one mark question. And then question number 2a again, based on the diagram, state the relationship between r and d square. As we can see, the graph is increasing and it passed through the origin. So we might might immediately think that y is directly proportional to x but it's not because over here 
on the x-axis is 1 over d square and the question is asking the relationship between r and d square not r and 1 over d square so the answer is r is inversely proportional to d square and then after that b c d is just a bunch of calculations i think you guys know how to do that you just have to extrapolate some points from the graph and then find the gradient using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then just substitute all those things in this mess and you'll get the answer and also when you extrapolate make Make sure you show that you extrapolate using a dotted line and the points that you choose make sure you choose really good points that really cross the box and it's clear to see like the two points that I use here are just really good because I can clearly see the y value and the x value whereas something like this is just horrible you have no idea what the y value and the x value is because it's somewhere in the middle and then last but not least state one precaution that should be taken to improve the accuracy of the result of the experiment I have this template here, I want you to memorize all of this. A general precaution which can usually be used for everything is the position of the eyes must be perpendicular to the scale reading of measuring instrument. If the question is an experiment about pendulum and inertia, repeat the experiment twice or a few times to find the average reading. If the experiment is about spring, take the reading after the spring stops moving. And if the experiment is about light, do the experiment in a dimmer or dark room. And if the experiment is about electric, make sure the connection of the wires are tight. So for this question it's quite general so I can't really use any of B, C, D, E. So I chose to use the precaution in A which is repeat experiment a few times and calculate average for more accurate result. And just like that we are done with section A and we can move on to section B. Just like paper 2 physics, the beauty of this section is you have two questions and you can choose which one to answer. Question number 3 and question number 4. Question number 3 is always from form 4 and question number 4 is always from form 5. So you can choose if you want to fully master form 4 or form 5. In the Google Drive link, I have added a bunch of files which contain a lot of experiments from form 4 and form 5. So to be safe, you can go through everything. Or if you want to, you can choose to just go through form 4 or just go through form 5. Completely up to you, but you are safe either way. So when you've read the question and chosen which question you want to answer, immediately I want you to write RV depends on MV and MV affects RV. Because for question number 1, inference, this is the template. If you write your answer in these two forms, you will always get a correct answer given that your RV and MV are correct. And I also want you to write as MV increase decrease, comma rv increase decrease because this is literally the format for hypothesis as well the answer that i wrote for this question is angle of refraction depends on the angle of incident therefore angle of refraction is rv and angle of incident is mv so rv depends on mv and for the hypothesis i wrote as the angle of incident increase angle of refraction also increase which basically is as mv increase rv also increase it's an easy 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 two marks as long as you know what your MV and RV are. And then the last part of section C, the part where everyone is so afraid of, planned experiment. But trust me, this is actually very, very easy. They've literally given you everything that you need to write as well. So this question is really not that hard, even if you don't know what to do. So for AIM, as usual, you just need to write to investigate the relationship between MV and RV. I usually write to study the relationship between MV and RV, but either way, you are correct. And then for variables, nothing special. I just write them all down. And then for apparatus and materials, remember to mix them together. Do not write apparatus apparatus and materials as two separate things because if you do that way and then if you place the materials and apparatus wrongly you will get wrong so just mix them together and write everything you know keep in mind that you can write as much as you want even if you write some apparatus and materials here that are wrong the examiner won't deduct marks but they will always give you marks for all the apparatus and materials that you've written correctly Keep that in mind. And then for the diagram, remember that it's only one mark. So do not, I repeat, do not spend too much time here. It's only one mark. Draw it as simple as you can. Remember to label everything using a ruler in parallel. What I mean by in parallel is some people tend to label their diagrams like this and this and this and this and this is wrong. The correct way to label is to keep it parallel. And then for the procedure, it's really not that hard as well. The first sentence I'll write, apparatus is set up as shown in the diagram. And then the second line is where we'll get our first mark. The first mark is when we state the value of MV. So ray box is adjusted so that angle of incident is 20 degrees. I am openly mentioning that my first manipulative variable is 20 degrees. 
one mark. You get your second mark when you state that you are measuring or recording the reading of RV. The angle of refraction is measured and recorded using a protractor. Make sure to state what you are using if it's a meter rule, if it's a vernier caliper, if it's a thermometer. Make sure to write what you are using. And then the final mark for procedure is when you write repeat the experiment with four different values of MV. So what you have to write here is you can either write repeat the experiment or what I do is steps 2 and 3 are repeated using the angle of incident of 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees and 70 degrees. You need to use at least 4 different values so I used 5 just to be safe. And last but not least I just state a precaution that experiment is conducted in a dark room but this is not necessary. The precaution will not give you marks in physics paper 3 I just write it just in case. And then table it data just like what I said before. Remember to write your units and fill up your MV with all the values that you used and make sure to leave your RV blank. Do not write anything here because you are just planning the experiment. You are not conducting it. And then last but not least analyze data. Plot a graph of angle of refraction against angle of incident. Basically plot graph RV against MV but since you don't have any values you just fill up the x-axis which is for the MV. And that's all from me in this video guys, just a quick last minute guide for SPM physics. Please leave a like if this video was in any way beneficial to you, subscribe for more tips, good luck and as always, aim for the best, never settle for less and let God handle the rest. Peace!